My name is Eric Chappell, author of AutoCAD Civil 3D Essentials for 2013, and this is the additional exercise for Chapter 4. For the first part of this exercise, we're asked to create a surface from the contour data in the drawing. So I'll start that by right-clicking the Surfaces node in Prospector and saying Create Surface. And I'm just going to call this EG from Contours, and give it a style that's existing contours five feet. That sounds good for now. I'll click OK. Now that the surface is created, I can browse beneath it under definition and locate the contours node. Right click there and pick add. And I'm just going to accept the defaults here. Click OK. And just select everything in the drawing except for the green outline. And just like that, I've created a surface from contours. In fact, you can see how the gray contours follow the originals. For the next part of this exercise, we're going to use the green polyline to create an outer boundary for the surface. So basically, we want to contain the surface inside of the area bounded by the green polyline. To do that, I'm going to right-click on the Boundaries node beneath my new EG from Contours surface, and I'll select Add. This is an outer boundary, which is what is selected by default. I'll go ahead and click OK, select the green polyline, and as you can see, there's only gray contours inside of the area bounded by the green polyline, so it's that simple, adding a boundary to the surface. Next, we're asked to do an elevation analysis of the surface to show the distribution of high and low elevations. So to do that, I'll uh, select the surface and go to surface properties and I'll go to the analysis tab and I want to do an elevation analysis now the book doesn't really give you any instructions on how many ranges to create or anything like that so I'm going to take some liberties here and say we're going to break this up into three ranges low medium and high we'll call it so I'll go ahead and set that up and I'm going to make my low ranges green my mid range is yellow and my high range is red. Now of course you could do this with five ranges or ten or however many you want. Use whatever color scheme you want. This just so happens to be the way I'm going to break it down. I could also edit the numbers here and use round numbers. Maybe 160 to 185 is one range. 185 to 190 is another. And then 190 to 205 is my third range. Okay. Now that's one part of it. The other part of it is I need to go to the style and choose a, sh a style that shows that, that banding. So I'm going to pick the 3D version. That way I can look at this in 3D and it'll look kind of cool. So I'll pick that, hit OK. We can see the colors um, taking place here. And then if we call this up in Object Viewer, we can look at it in 3D and color at the same time. So let me turn this up on its side. Change the style to conceptual. And there we get a nice look at the highs, lows, and middle elevations. Okay, very cool way to visualize your surface. The next thing we're asked to do is to assign the C existing contours five foot style to the surface and if you're working in the metric data set then that's going to be a C existing contours 2 meter. Let me close down object viewer here and I'll click on my surface which I changed to uh, my 3D elevation analysis style and I'll just go back to surface properties choose the style that we're being asked to use C existing contours 5 foot there it is click OK and it's actually back to what it was before. This is actually the default I used when I created it in the first place. So that satisfies the requirement for the, uh, the style that shows the contour interval the way it needs to be shown for this particular application. Next, we're asked to create several spot elevation and slope labels on the surface. So as a general rule, I typically like to start all labeling with the generic add labels command. So I'll go to the annotate tab click the add labels command and that brings up the add labels dialog and from here I can label everything. Now you can go uh, and do things like click the surface and pick a label command from here 
but even here I'll go up and say add surface labels which once again gives me the the generic add labels dialog now some people um, who work in drawings that don't have many styles can get away with using some of these commands where you go straight to a specific type of of uh, a label but the the downside of that that I see is that you're going to be using a default style and I tend to like to use I, I tend to like to assign the style as I'm working so I'm gonna go here to surface and then the first type of label I'm gonna put in is a spot elevation elevation only existing sounds good so I'll click add pick a few spots in the drawing this looks like a good one to label high points low points giving the viewers of the drawing a better idea what some of these elevations are. And then we're also asked to provide some slope labels, so I'll change my label type to slope. Percent existing sounds pretty good. I'll click add and I'm gonna do a one point slope and I might be interested in seeing what this slope is here. some other slopes in the drawing. Now if I want to go to a two-point slope I can click add again and this time pick two-point and now I can slope in whatever direction I want. The final thing we're asked to do is to create contour labels for the surface. So while I'm right here in the add labels dialog I'm gonna go ahead and switch it to contour multiple and these look like good styles they all have existing in them I'll click add and I'll drag a line through several contours and there you can see the uh, the contour labels that have been created Now, what's cool about this is I can copy this line to other places in the drawing and stretch it out to whatever configuration I like now if I want I can continue to use the add command to draw more lines or I can copy these lines around in the drawing or drag them through different areas to make labels wherever I need them and that takes care of the additional exercise for chapter 4